GBPCHF yesterday. Again, we spoke about this in the webinar. Um, so we were looking at potentially longs. The BMYs were, were mostly green. Um, it, again, it took a while for it to happen. Break of trend line, one, two, three. There's a bigger one, two, three. This was, you can see on the 15 minute, one, two, three, higher, low, higher, low, higher, high, higher, high. Everyone see that? Yeah, BMI is green, the, the swing ones anyway, and soon after the, the intraday ones turned here. So if you go into the lower time frame for your entry, there is the entry in here, stops there, 11 pip stop. Top to bottom is 100 pips, so like nine to one ish even if you got half of that four to one five to one good trade yeah does everyone follow that is that not clear to anyone put your hands up happy to explain it again okay cool yep so in the webinar yesterday i, I, I said we were looking for longs on chf gbp chf so firstly is start off with the basic analysis so here double bottom this was from what's the Thursday? So this was from Tuesday, double bottom, higher low, yeah. And then price moved up overnight, pulled back, and here we were getting a higher low in here, yeah. Do you see that? And then here you're seeing higher, high, higher, high, yeah. So then we just identified an obvious wavy trend line, waited for the break. mini pullback here and look at how price is holding on to the ribbon all the way holding on to the ribbon holding on to the ribbon breaks on that mini pullback entry there stop there we've already identified the big one two three yeah and the wavy trend line the break of trend line so if your entry is there so at this point in time, the swing indicators are green. Uh, the intraday indicator uh, B1 is green and B2 is sort of, I don't know exactly the moment it turned, but it's just about to turn or it might have turned or it might not have, but you've got three out of four definitely, right? That are green. So you've got the big one, two, three, break above trend line, mini pullback. And you see the little consolidation here, mini pullback. So one could have potentially entered aggressively here, stops here. Again, 11 pip stop just below the, the ribbon. You weren't taken out and most it went down with seven pips or if you're looking for a textbook entry in here, stop just below there. Yeah, do you follow that? Is that clear now? Yeah, perfect, awesome. Um, let me just have a quick look at GBP. Okay, cool. So it looks like it's about to stop pulling back. So one more that we'll look at is the other big move from yesterday. Okay. So a couple of you did take this, so well done. So again, so starting point. Okay. Keep your chart zoomed out. One, two, three. Price. So one, two, three. Price is here. Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. Lower high in here. Price is right at the trigger. One, two, three. So if it helps, you can draw this out. One, two, three. Price is again consolidating at the trigger. It's a 15 minute chart. And so then you can go into lower time frame. Price breaks here. You're waiting for that mini pullback. We already we've already identified the trend. Yeah, that it's it's going down. We've got lower highs, lower lows, right? So we know what the trend is. BMI, the swing indicator, is is red, and it's never turned green. It's solidly red. 
we've got that break of trend line here mini pullback this is the one minute chart look right at the uh, uh, the um, trigger entry in there and stop just in here like seven pips maybe uh, you might have even got a slightly better entry but just call it seven pips uh, and down to the bottom is 95 so you know 13 14 to 1 even if you get half of that six seven to one good trade yeah does everyone follow that I think on this one as well, you had the pivots were here somewhere. So that would have given you an additional confluence as well, um, that the pivots were uh, were, pro were providing um, uh, resistance. So that would have worked uh, again as, as a confluence in, in your uh, thing. But does, it, does everyone follow that? Or is that rather, is that not clear for anyone? If that's not clear, please let me know. Okay, not clear. Okay, cool. So no one's put their hands up. So I presume that is clear. Not as clear as the others. Okay, explain uh, what's not clear, and I can I can look at it, and we can we can uh, we can go over it for you. Mini pullback, and also the trend line. As I could have drawn my trend line a little down and missed the mini pullback. Okay, cool. Right. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so here it looks a bit distorted because uh, the price has moved quite a lot, but let me kind of, um, okay. So you don't know what's going on, right? Like in the future, but you're, if you're connecting up the bottoms here, initially this is how you draw your trend line. Okay, that's what you're initially doing. Price is currently above trigger, above ribbon, no clear push down. And again, you're waiting for break and mini pullback here. So you wouldn't have taken a short as it starts moving up. You redraw the trend line. So at this point in time, it's a nice wavy trend line, yeah? Do you see that? Stick your hand up if you, if you follow that trend line as of right now, yeah? Perfect, cool. Now, the trend line's been established because we've got a couple of waves. Yeah. So trend line's been established. Breaks down, and we've had a couple of candles close below the, the trigger. And as I said, I think the pivots are somewhere here. So we've had a couple of candles close below the pivots. It then pulls back. But what's the difference that you notice here? Let me zoom in a little bit. What's the difference you notice of the pullback here? and the pullback on the initial trend line that we drew here, okay? So this was the first trend line that we were looking for shorts, right? What is the difference? If everyone can answer, just type in, because this is a very, very important. This is, this is a critical piece. This is a really, really critical piece of information that you need to, um, that you need to fully understand. So this is your first trend line in here, and this was the first break and mini pullback, and this was the second break and mini pullback. That's fine. If you're not sure, you're not sure, that's, that's okay. Um, but yep, getting answers in. Okay. Cool. Look at the ribbon in both areas. Look at the ribbon in both areas. Where is price in relation to ribbon? So this is the mini pullback and it breaks right above the ribbon. And then look what happens. The ribbon is green. Ribbon is sloping up. Ribbon is green. And price is above the ribbon. Yeah. Whereas if you look about here, ribbon has crossed. Ribbon is red. Ribbon is sloping down. Ribbon is traveling down. Price is pulling back to the ribbon and it finds resistance at the ribbon. Do you see that? Does everyone see that? Hands up if you see that. 
this is so critical in terms of even getting in aggressive trades and things like that this is really critical you've heard me bang on and on and on about the ribbon and how important it is let me just check cable um and how important it is right so this is very very crucial this this little thing uh can keep you out of out of these bad trades because even here even here the top ribbon has just started sloping a little bit the bottom ribbon still green right it's still going on um it's still sloping up right whereas here definitively the ribbon is sloping down yeah 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 of course the trigger is important but we've also at the point of entry so at the point of entry which is here price is below the the trigger anyway right so you would only enter short below the trigger of course 100 percent, the triggers trigger is vital and it's important but in terms of the overall analysis obviously we know lower high lower low etc etc we, we we know we're looking for shorts bmis are red etc we know all that um so it's just about picking the right moment to enter okay so in this instance price is below the trigger so why couldn't you get in here right so you've got this move down move up and you see the tail here which is the initial move down so one could argue how oh, could i not potentially getting there right but again ribbon yeah ribbon is um ribbon is sloping up ribbon is green here there's a big difference in the in the shape the color and the trend of the ribbon and the ribbons holding and this is still one two three 15 minutes of candles at resistance and the fourth is the one where it moves down so again it when you when you see a trade setting up and you think you know especially if you get a bit of fomo and you're looking to miss out on or you're thinking you might miss out on a trade look at this this was a great move that we identified in the webinar early the actual trade didn't fire till 10 40 yeah so you know two and a bit hours after we finished the webinar two and a half hours almost but we identified what we were looking at and then even when the entry came it was there the consolidation at the ribbon was there for 15 minutes before and if you count this candle 20 because you wouldn't have entered on this candle, you would have entered on that candle so 20 minutes 25 minutes even if you can't this candle right price was just consolidating at the trigger and then moving on moving down after a clear defined if we go back onto the one minute clear defined mini break of trend line yeah and even if you didn't go onto the one minute it was fairly obvious what to do on the five minute right but the, the one minute just enables you get to get in a slightly tighter entry and tighter stop yeah um so obviously ultimately your risk reward is a little bit better but even on the five minute it's fairly obvious what you're doing here what you're looking at okay so ribbon is very very key okay and again that was a fairly straightforward easy move down does everyone follow that does that make sense uh if there's any doubts or if anyone's unsure of anything please do ask uh it's absolutely fine we've only got one trade on the radar for this morning which is gbp usd potentially gold but that's not really gone anywhere so we have time um while we're waiting for gbp usd to to kind of pull back so if any doubts at all about that please do ask because now's a really good time um to 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 go over everything and also you know by you asking the question it could be that someone else is thinking it as well so just by you asking the question you're helping serve all, all the other members as well um so if anything is unsure or unclear yep so okay so although the entry was short one two three was not a or v right so this in in my opinion is not really an a shape it's, it's mostly going sideways remember we're identifying the v-shape on the 15 minute so we're identifying the trend early right so we've got price breaking down moving up look at where the trigger is look at where price comes to price moves down back up to the trigger so this is the v-shape yeah this is the v-shape we're looking at and you can see here red prices is, uh is, is moving uh, the the momentum is uh, red yeah so we're looking on the short side here uh where's it gone okay two things here 
one obviously we've already identified uh uh the the uh the, the v-shape we already can see that the momentum is mostly down the intraday indicator did turn green for a short while but the swing was firmly red by the time we get a, even a little bit of a test or a break here of the two remember you need a break of the two to three and a shape by its own means nothing if price just goes straight down which is what happened here so firstly here if you draw this a shape a very steep non non wavy trend line secondly price had already broken support here thirdly price had not broken above a ribbon so you would not be looking for longs yeah you see how it's held on at the ribbon price has broken the support already and we we're getting if you zoom out and this is why it's important to i keep on banging on about it but it's so so important it's important you don't look at your charts like this or even like this because you get sucked in to, to seeing false a shapes and false v shapes if you look at your chart like this for example here and this is this again like i say it pretty much at least twice a week but this is how i keep my own charts if you're looking at this chart here and you you can't see what's happening in the future so this is what you can see right there's no way in hell you're looking for a long here right because it's lower high lower high lower high can everyone see that right obviously we don't know what's happened to the right hand side but if you're looking for these uh if you're looking at this price action here it's firmly in a downtrend right does anyone disagree does anyone disagree no does everyone see that what i've just explained hands up if you've all follow awesome perfect okay so it's absolutely crucial that you keep you know your charts like i mean this is how i personally trade so i'm only telling you what works for me right and you know you guys have all seen the trades i take the alerts i send like generally that obviously there's always losing ones losing ones happen but when we win we win really well we win big we win nicely and that was just you know even yesterday those three trades we also there was also an aggressive long on aussie usd and aggressive long on euro usd but even if you didn't take those if you just took these textbook ones those all three were big winners that one day alone um forget going to max even if you took half of each one that would have been worth you know 15 16 17 r just on that one day yeah so this is how i personally trade so if you don't i highly recommend you do that because it gives you an overall picture of what the whole thing is doing whereas if you are like i said zoomed in like this it's very very easy to look at that and say oh yeah look b1 and b2 are turning green on the intraday price is above trigger price above ribbon i'm going to look for a long and you get sucked in yeah cool so Hopefully that's helpful.